A modulation matrix is a really common interface for assigning modulation in a software synthesizer. And here in Ableton's operator, we can use the modulation matrix to make our operator preset respond to the dimensions of touch from the Rolly Seaboard. We'll see in a modulation matrix multiple columns. The first column is going to be your modulation sources, and many of these in the operator uh, synthesizer correspond to the MIDI messages sent by the dimensions of touch from the Rolly Seaboard. We'll see velocity, the strike dimension. We're going to see aftertouch, which is the MIDI that's created from the press dimension. We have pitch bend, which is the MIDI message generated from the glide dimension. And we don't have continuous controller or uh, control change 74 that would be sent by the slide dimension, but we can use modulation wheel and we might bring in the uh, touch faders to be able to do that. So a lot of this modulation matrix directly corresponds to the dimensions of touch generated by the Seaboard Rise. The first one I want to look at is aftertouch, because we can get a really cool response from the press dimension of the Seaboard Rise. Let's hear the sound before I do any of this editing. It's a nice kind of distorted sine wave with a bit of delay, but it's not responsive at all. And so I'm going to go to the aftertouch first. I want this to respond to that press dimension of touch. So we have aftertouch as a modulation source. I'll go to the destination column here, and I'll choose volume really common for pressure to control volume in these patches. I think it just, it just feels right. And we'll do that 100%. Let's try that out. So right away, I can kind of lean into it, and I feel it gain energy. It just feels right, but it's not quite enough. I notice it like with a violin performance, when they, when they bow harder, it gets louder, but it also gets brighter and more, more brilliant. And we can kind of achieve that by using a second destination from the same modulation source. And a, many modulation matrices, like the one here, have multiple destinations from a single source. And we can have press control multiple things. And so I'll also have it control oscillator feedback. It's going to give us kind of a distorted character when I push harder. Let's try this. Now, I want to hear it really well, so I'm going to turn my filter frequency up quite a bit so we hear that high end when I do push harder. I love how that kind of brilliance responds to reverb and delay. I want to bring the filter frequency down a little bit now, but we'll actually modulate that with the mod wheel later, which is, which is really fun. All right, the next one that I want to work on, which I really like, is velocity. So we have velocity here as a modulation source. Remember that the strike dimension of touch on the Rolly Seaboard Rise sends velocity MIDI messages. At least I always did with, when, with standard control or MIDI controllers or traditional MIDI controllers was have velocity control like volume, right? If I hit a key hard, it was a loud note. And that's fine for percussive instruments where the energy just decays away naturally. But if you have a sustaining instrument like a violin, well, you can change the, the, the volume over the course of the note, right? And so controlling the, the volume of the whole note just from that initial message of, of velocity doesn't really make sense. And so what I like to do is have uh, strike, which sends MIDI message velocity, control something having to do with the attack portion of the sound, right? And then I can use aftertouch or the press dimension on the Seaboard to control volume over the course of the note. I think that works really well for kind of sustaining sounds. And so what I'll have velocity to do with, which I really like, is have it control the envelope time. So that if I hit the key wave hard, the sound comes in right away. And if I push on the key wave gently, the sound swells in. To do that, we'll assign velocity to control time in a negative direction. And let's try that out. I'll play gently on a key wave. Swells in. And then I have that press control. I'll hit a key wave hard. Sound starts right away, right? Really nice interaction. I think you'll find yourself wanting this in all your patches. I love it. All right. And the next thing I want to assign here and make sure it's set correctly is pitch bend. The glide dimension left and right, we have to get that pitch bend range set correctly. Usually, I'll just go to my synthesizer and try to set it as high as possible and then set that same number in the Rolly dashboard. And this one goes up to 24 semitones. We'll just have to set that in the Rolly dashboard in a moment. And then the last one is Mod Wheel. And we said that you know we don't have something in Operator that is a CC74 modulation source, which is what the slide dimension sends, but we can have Mod Wheel control something in the synthesizer. I'll have it control filter frequency so we have a nice timbre control. And I'll do that 100%. And then I'll also have it control filter drive. So it's really responsive and to get a kind of a gritty character when we turn that modulation way up. 
Now we're going to go over to the Rolly dashboard and configure it to send the MIDI messages that we've just uh, configured the synthesizer to respond to. Mainly is to set the modulation wheel. So here in the Rolly dashboard, I do have it set to single mode. We don't have the polyphonic expression yet. We'll do that in a future video. We have pitch bend range set to 24, which is the same thing that we set in operator. And I'm going to configure this first touch fader to send CC1 or modulation. Now, if we want to have access to that CC1, we have to change our mode button carefully. In the expression mode, you'll see the icons lit for three of the dimensions of touch. If we click the mode button again, you'll switch over to MIDI mode, and your touch faders are now assignable to send different CCs. And we've configured the first one to send CC1. Let's try it out. That's nice. And the cool thing is, we now have this interaction between our dimensions of touch, in that when this is really low, I don't really notice much of a difference with pressure. In fact, I know I do, but it's really only that volume that I notice, right? But if I turn this up, then I really notice how when I push hard, it gets really bright. And so we're getting this interaction between our dimensions of touch, just like we would get on a violin or any other acoustic instrument. As we add in all these expressive dimensions, it really starts feeling re responsive and all these interrelations just come alive. I, I love that. I'm gonna do a little performance. I gotta play a little. 